Buck Maggard and the late Morgan Sexton, the noted banjo player and storyteller, pull up a chair in WMMT's on-air room and talk about good music and good eating. For those of you who are tired of turkey, consider this alternative. You know, I ate possum one time. I had some of my sister. I was pretty hungry. Uh -huh. I had never eaten no possum before. And well, she had this possum cooked and dumped me on it. Well, they got me out some. I ate three or four bites. Sister looked over and said, Do you like possum, Morgan? No, I just have something. can't stand, stand possum. She said, Well, that's what you're eating. I looked at her and just shoved my plate back. No more possum. That's the last bite of possum ever I eat. I couldn't hardly tell you. They kind of got a a little bit slick taste. I got turned against from eating so many of them. What years were, was that you had to eat so many groundhogs? Oh. That was in about 1943, 44, long hour. After I moved to Bull Creek. Well, that's why you fix the groundhog. Take and clean them up. And, uh, now, you got what they call kernels at under his four legs. You watch and cut all them kernels out of there. Don't, you get it, clean it up good and get all them kernels out from under his four legs. If you don't do it, the groundhog is bitter. And cut your groundhog up, put him on a big cooker, cook him till he gets plum tender. Then you take him, uh, take him out of that, lay him out in a pan, have you a big bread pan. Well, back then, man had big bread pans to bake bread in. And you put a whole lot of grease in that pan. <laughs> then you make it pretty black with pepper. You go out and get some spice wood, right? The spice wood grows out in the hill. And take and cut you off pieces and make something like a toothpick. Stick it down in that groundhog, every piece of it, two or three of them. Well, when you do that, you put him out in the oven and bake him. You take him out and then you've got good eating the groundhog. Do you know the story behind that, that song? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us the story behind, the, uh, behind Callahan. Well, this old man, Harm Callahan was his name. And he dealt in cattle all the time. You know, they pretty well they stole them from people, wouldn't give them nothing for him. This man had about seven or eight head of cattle, nice head of cattle. And, well, Callahan, he walked up and said, Mister, said, you don't sell them cattle? And yeah, and fair enough, I can't give you that much for him. He made him price, and he said, I can't give you that much of them cattle. I said, I won't take no less. Or him said, you'll take less before daylight. Well, he uh, went back home next morning. Had cattle ham. He went and stole this man's cattle. He went to feed them. There was no cattle in the field. Well, he knowed, this cattle ham knowed this man would kill him. He got, got up with him. He had two rooms and a hallway from one to the other. He had traveled that hallway, one room in the other, never to get himself out where anybody could see him. And these fellow laid away him one year. When they stepped out in the opening, that was the last of Harm Callahan that killed him. The fellow named McCoy, he was a colored boy, little to early. And he, uh, Bill Walters, a fellow named Bill Walters, had a garage at Blackie. And he had a motorcycle. Coy was up there every day wanting to ride that motorcycle. Well, Bill wouldn't let him ride it. He kept on aggravating Bill one day. He said, well, Bill, I'll let him ride that. If he tires up, he'll just tear it up. He put Coy on it. Right up the river he went. He's gone, gone, and gone. He kind of got uneasy about him. He thought he'd send somebody to see about Coy, see what happened to him. When they met Coy, Coy finally got the motorcycle stopped. He said, everything I said, said he got that much faster. <laughs> he led it back down the road. This fellow uh, overtook Coy. Coy, what's the matter? ain't riding that motorcycle. Everything I said, said he got that much faster. He said, I'll just lead it back to the house. That was Buck Maggard talking to the late Morgan Sexton.